Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. Uh, I wanted to go over a, you know, one of my thermal management uh, strategies that I'm planning uh, for the Ford Ranger Electric Pack. And, and what I got were these actually, they're water tank heaters, right? Uh, and you can kind of read here, it's a it's a 13.5 volt, so it's essentially a 12 volt system, uh, up to 78 watts, and these have a built-in, um, you know, they have a built-in uh, uh, thermometer that will measure temperature, and they trigger at, I believe it is 45 degrees uh, Fahrenheit uh, per the manual here, um, and uh, and then they'll continue uh, heating up until it gets to, to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which basically keeps lithium iron phosphate uh, in their happy zone. 45 degrees is pretty cold, but it's operable. Uh, you can't charge at the fastest rates or things like that, but you, you know, it, the batteries will still operate. But once it hits that 45 degree temperature, it will trigger uh, and these will warm. Now I'm not gonna apply these directly uh, to the sides of the cells. Um, you know, there'll be probably an aluminum uh, plate that I use in between. Uh, and and I'll, I'll go over that configuration where I actually put them in the pack, but I have several of them But what I wanted to do is actually test it, that they're actually working uh, because like I said they trigger at 45 degrees uh, And so I wanted to give them a little bit of power and it got down to I think 42 Last night and some of the batteries were outside. So I wanted to bring uh, one of those cold soaked batteries in and hopefully just hook it up and see uh, if I can get some sort of amperage current reading coming out um, of a, the DC power supply basically indicating uh, that that it's triggered by the cold battery and it's actually warming the cell. Alright, well I can't find any information um, about whether uh, you know positive is positive or negative is negative so I'm assuming that the red uh, is positive the positive lead uh, it's DC so it shouldn't matter that much and it's low power DC so I've already got the positive lead hooked up and I'm just gonna hook over to the negative and like I said this might or might not uh, be uh, cool enough to trigger it but it is cool to the touch um, and so hopefully I can get some sort of a reading somewhere um, and I don't know where in the pad the uh, thermistor is. Alright, so and unfortunately it looks like it's not really triggering any sort of a response. Now it's possible that the battery cell itself didn't get down to 45 degrees. Like I said it was only 42, um, but that's a little bit unfortunate. I'm going to need to maybe do a little bit of dissecting to find exactly where on here uh, the the thermistor is and then um, yeah, I see here it is 45 degrees um, find where the thermistor is and then just verify because I do want to test each one of these I think I got nine of these cells uh, nine of these pads so I want to test each one to make sure each one is working and each one is triggering uh, when it's supposed to be all right, well, that's good news and bad news. I just hooked up this second pad and it immediately started up, immediately started drawing uh, a little over five amps, um, just positive to positive. Uh, so now I'm worried that the maybe the other pad uh, was faulty or not working. Um, if that's the case, then I'm gonna, like I said, this is kind of why I wanted to do this. I need to go through each one of these pads uh, one by one and just separate out if if there is a bad one then I need to contact the seller uh, and get them replaced because I really probably am going to use uh, all nine of them to finish the pack so uh, yeah, and I can already feel the warmth like a heated steering wheel or heated seat all right so I want to keep the battery temperature down if I can so I'm gonna pull this on. should technically do uh, negative first but whatever get away with low voltages so remove the battery and test the next pad good pad up bad pad down 
So, so these batteries, this is, this is the next pad. Uh, these batteries are barely cold enough to trigger the sensor, but this will continue powering until it's 68 degrees. So I have to be very careful um, about uh, warming, warming the battery to the point that it won't trigger. So uh, this is again another one where it didn't go off. So I need to verify again where the temperature sensor is and maybe whether this is triggering it properly. Okay, so this is a tentative bad one as well. All right, so this would be the, the fourth one that's faulty if this is the case. Um, I think I'm going to need to do a little bit more testing because what I, I think is this cell just maybe is barely cold enough to trigger it. And the, the, the first one that was working maybe was just sensitive enough uh, to trigger. Or there's the other possibility that the one that I think is working is maybe just broken and it's constantly uh, running, which would just would be maybe worse than if it weren't working at all, actually. So, um, yeah, I'm going to need to make sure that I get uh, something that's definitely cold enough to trigger this. Uh, 45 degrees, like I said, I know this was cold soaked and it was like 42, but that still might not be cold enough um, to, to really sort of set these off. Um, and then, yeah, I just want to make sure that I'm getting the thermistor correctly identified in terms of its location. Um, and then, uh, you know, the other, the other possibility is uh, because this might be designed to get readings from this side, it, it might be possible that I have to actually uh, apply it from this side just to see, um, to get that, that sort of cold, cold temperature reading. Um, but again, it might just barely be uh, triggering. So uh, I'll need to do a little bit more testing and then follow up. All right, so one thing I wanted to also try um, because it, it, it wasn't sitting right with me is this is the one that I think is working or at least I know it heats. Uh, but ironically, the others might be working and this might be the one that's broken because the others weren't being triggered so it's possible that the battery cell just wasn't cold enough to trigger the thermostat but the thermostat is actually working in it whereas this one you know it's it's not cool it's cool in here but it's not cold at all so if i take this and just hook it up right now it automatically starts heating so even without anything here to trigger this uh, thermostat it's going so this actually might be the broken cell that's just working um, regardless right the thermostat is broken in this so it's just it's just triggering and going once power is applied and that well actually no but I think that might just be a loose connection either way though if, I'll, I'll have to check this further because the problem with this is if if it is just triggering whenever, um, that's actually worse than if it didn't go off when the battery was cold, right? Because, I mean, going off, not going off when the battery is cold, what's the worst thing you have? You have a cold soaked battery. But, um, you know, going off um, prematurely when the battery is already warm, you're introducing a whole lot of heat, you're wasting energy um, that's being fed into the battery, and that's not, that's not acceptable. Yeah, so I don't know. It's it seems to have shut off now though. So I'll have to put this in the pending pile. But yeah, I think it means that those other cells, at least their thermostat might be working. So I just need to to, like I said, make sure I have something cold enough to actually trigger it. Maybe just chilling the entire plate itself, and then hooking it up to the power. So I might end up doing that. All right. Well, um, I. Uh decided to let these cold soak out night outside overnight um, it got down to about 40 so uh, left the battery cell in the box for good measure because it's also uh, pretty chilly um, but but yeah so I think I'm gonna pull all of these pads out uh, the one that came on before uh, even when I, without anything cold attached to it eventually did shut off so that might have just been the 
the trigger so like I said it might simply be that that one was cold enough to trigger but the others weren't so these temperature sensors uh, should be down to about 40 degrees now uh, after after being outside so I kind of want to see if I can test them uh, with this uh, with this DC power supply before before they warm up Gotta be careful, I don't wanna short out the... So, yep, that one worked right away. Just kinda go quickly so these don't warm up to house temperatures. So, card number two. And that's still not cold enough to trigger it, so there could still be a problem. <sighs> I don't wanna have to send a bunch of them back. Alright, so I apologize for not filming every last second of it, only so many hands, but so far good news is three out of the four have triggered, so I'm getting a little bit more confident that um, maybe just one, uh, hopefully not more than one or two bad uh, of these pads out of this batch. Again, like I said, I'm trying to, to go quickly, but the other thing is too, I need to maintain sort of different distance between these leads uh, because this DC to DC power supply it just feeds as much power as you know resistance and whatever is asking for so up to the current level it'll just feed power so uh, there it goes straight up to about 5.6 um, so you don't want to you don't want you can short out the machine by tricking, you know, tripping uh, positive to negative. All right, and uh, let's see that I haven't even unbundled some of these wires yet, but uh, we're down to to basically the the last three. It doesn't have to be a perfect connection, just enough to establish that power is feeding through. So, yep. Yeah. So again, we're we're up to. Now just one, one bad one, it's probably just a faulty thermistor. And notice I also have my regular um, thicker power cables coming out. I, I like the thicker gauges because uh, more copper, less, less impedance on the system. So if I'm charging or whatever, I can do a sustained current load for much more, longer. Now this, this unit I forget, but I think it might, might be max uh, 10 amps. So, uh, there you go. So, one more in the books. So, down to the last one to confirm. Whichever one you think you're pulling on that's right is it's not. It's always it's always the wrong one. All right. Again, not not as super concerned about the connection. I just want to make sure. And then there we go. So right up to again about five point seven. And it probably didn't take that long to heat up the pad. And th this could be why I was running into issues. Oh, I just broke the connection. So, yeah, I have to make sure it's a much better connection in the future. But, uh, but yeah, it just jumped right up to about 5.7 uh, amps. So, uh, one bad pad, uh, eight good pads, it looks like. The wiring harness is going to be... It's gonna be a mess. Um, now, just based on what I saw, each one of them is drawing about six amps. Uh, and then, you know, they say, I believe these are 78 watts. So you can kind of do the math in terms of how much, uh, you know, how much heating there is. I, I'm basically looking at introducing about a 700 watt um, heater inside the pack that's going to respond to temperatures below uh, 45 degrees and uh, you know and then warm it until it reaches 68 degrees uh, and then like I said the main challenge is going to be getting a high enough power uh, 12 volt lead but then I'm also going to definitely want some sort of a kill switch that I can turn off manually so if I know the truck is just going to be in storage for a long period of time, I don't want it drawing from the 12 volt battery. Um, you know, if it's charging, maybe that 
maybe that switch can flip off or whatever and then it will just keep uh, keep the battery warm using uh, power from the grid uh, so I'll have to figure out the final configuration but so far I'm pretty satisfied um, we know that there are usually some duds so I just need to make sure I, I set this one aside um, you know it could have been just a short or a problem with the lead um, but I, I, I'm guessing it's probably the thermistor that triggers it uh, but these other ones came on right away after they had been chilled down to about 40 degrees. So, um, yeah, I think I think it's working. And I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, like I said, maybe do a little bit more testing with this one. See if I can return it. I could do this system with just 8. But um, I think I had mapped out 9. But who knows, maybe I can only use 8 of them anyway. But I'll still try to see if I can get a replacement for these. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is kind of the, the sort of uh, attempt that I'm going to do at making an integrated heating system to keep the battery warm, uh, running solely off of electricity, just, just basically uh, solid state power as opposed to, to any sort of coolant loop uh, or any feeding anything other than electrical wiring into the pack at this point. So uh, I'd, l I'd love to hear what you think. Have you had a chance to use this sort of Fox uh, Facon? Facon, like bacon, maybe. Um, these heating pads, I know they're primarily used for RVs, um, water tanks, pipes, and I might actually end up using some of them on the property for things other than uh, the truck, but I'm just kind of curious. They also have, you know, the 13.5 and 120 volts. So, um, yeah, so far, so good. Like I said, I'll just get this one replaced. Uh, but I have eight working pads right now, it appears, and then I'll just have to plan how to integrate them and the wiring harness into the system uh, and show you how I end up doing that. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.